Let's talk about the home buying process. So when you're when you're thinking about buying a home, the very first thing that you should do when you're just beginning the planning process is you probably want to check out your credit report using one of those free apps. Mm -hmm. uh, credit Karma is a good one. Um, you'll be surprised to find out when you do apply for a mortgage, this is not your actual credit score. Right now, realty expert John Brodeen is in the studio. How are you, buddy? Hey, I'm good. Uh, big news, big news. Yeah. You might yeah. as well say it right now. Yeah, so Carolyn and I are expecting a little baby girl in December. How about that? Yeah, can't wait. Your first child. Our first, yep. December. Yep. Coming up with any names yet? Uh, we got a couple we got it narrowed down to. Oh, we got cool. a few more months to decide. Yeah, but yeah she's uh, actually today, she's officially halfway. She's 20 weeks. Wow. Congratulations, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, what a, what of an exciting time in your life. Yeah, I know. And a little it, scary, is, a little exciting. Yeah, little is, exciting. is this just going to be the start of the Brodeen family? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Now it's just a dog and a kid, and yeah, just keep going from there. Yep, exactly. Um, Friday today, big plans for the weekend, or not so much? Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't think we have too much going on this weekend. But then uh, next weekend we're heading out to uh, Minneapolis and then Wisconsin for Carolyn's family reunion. So oh, that should for be a cool. good time. All yeah. right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn's birthday next Friday. So. Oh boy. Um, so yeah, we'll do a little night in the cities on our way to Eau Claire. Sure. Yeah. Um, when did you say uh, the baby girls do? Uh, December seventh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Christmas baby could I be. I know. Yeah. You know what really sucks though is we have a friend, one of our good friends, their wedding. Uh, it's it's in uh, Tulum, Mexico. And, oh. Uh, it's like <laughs> a couple weeks right before she's due, so we're not gonna be able to go. And oh. Just, we, were, we were bummed out about that. Yeah. Really, well. I'm sure they understand. Yeah, I think Carolyn's still going to make it to the bachelorette party because that's in, like, September. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about her getting all crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd be worried about flying and, yeah, sure. you know. Mm -hmm. Well, she, yeah, she doesn't drink anyway, so. Oh, okay. She, I never have to worry about that. No, okay. She, she um, behaves herself. Uh, okay, let's talk about the home buying process, okay? Yeah. Uh, from start to end. Yes. Do okay. we have enough time? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be. I'll try to keep okay. it quick. Is there like a red light you can turn on if I'm droning on for too long? How about I just throw a pen at you? <laughs> that'd be subtle. Yeah, that'd uh, be subtle. <laughs> so, okay, I could throw one of these. Yeah, they're they're nice and soft. Yeah. So when you're when you're thinking about buying a home, um, your first step is you, the very first thing that you should do when you're just beginning the planning process is you probably want to check out your credit report using one of those free apps. Mm -hmm. uh, credit Karma is a good one. Um, you'll be surprised to find out when you do apply for a mortgage, this is not your actual credit score. They use their algorithm to come up with, um, you know, a score that so they can try to predict what mm -hmm. your actual like FICO score is going to be, but it's not your actual credit score. So okay. don't be surprised if the number on Credit Karma and the number that comes back when your credit report gets run by the bank are two different numbers. The main thing we're looking for here is, is there anything you don't recognize on this credit report? Okay. Are there any issues you got to square away, like your credit card utilization or uh, late payments or something like that, just so you know what's going on? Mm -hmm. uh, if everything looks good and it's what you expect, uh, your next step, once you've... You know, if you've saved up your money for your down payment, um, is to get in touch with your professionals. So your main team when you're buying a home is going to consist of uh, myself as the realtor. You're going to have your mortgage lender, which I can help put you in touch with a good one. Um, you're going to have like your insurance agent who's going to be helping you out. You're going to have the title company who's going to be working closely with us. Um, and you're going to probably have your home inspector as well. Uh, that's those are kind of the main members of the, your team. The mm -hmm. ones you're going to have the most contact with are going to be myself and your mortgage lender. Um, so you can uh, this this can be very early on in the process. I should mention that you're not the one who pays me when you buy a home. I do get paid when you buy a home. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter which home you pick out. Any home that's on the market, I'm going to get paid a commission that gets taken out of the seller's proceeds. Sure, I'm still only representing you. I'm acting in your best interest at all times. Uh, any house that's listed on the market will pay me a buyer agent commission. So I get paid at closing no matter what, mm -hmm. no matter what house you buy. Um, so I'm not, uh, you know, it's not like I can only show you Berkshire Hathaway home. Sure, right, like right. Greenberg Realty, Crary, mm -hmm. Oxford, any house that's on the market, I'm able to show you and I still get paid. Okay. So you don't have to worry about that part. The earlier you get in touch with me, the more value you get out of this situation. Um, if you wait until the very end, maybe you've made some mistakes along the way and you've, you know, cause yourself more hassle mm -hmm. than you need to, I can set you on the right path from sure. the very beginning uh, and get you going. Um, so 
with me, my goal is to find out what your budget is. Your lender is also going to help with that by pre-approving you up to a certain amount and figuring out what payment you're most comfortable with. Uh, we're also going to find, I'm going to take a lot of time figuring out what your needs and wants are, what you, what your preferences are in the new home. That way I can be more effective in trying to find you mm -hmm. the right home. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally I'll be able to find homes that have not hit the market yet. That might be a good option for you. Stuff that's off market that I know about as well as all the listings that are on the market, make sure that you don't miss anything. Okay. Um, so, um, once you're pre-approved through the lender, that's when we're going to begin going out and looking at homes. We should, we start the shopping process and this is kind of the fun part. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I'll have you do is uh, I want you to understand the various neighborhoods just as well as I do. Sure. So, right. um, I might encourage you on the weekend to go drive by a few different houses, check out the neighborhoods, see what neighborhoods you like, report back to me on what you like. It's all about me getting to understand your needs and wants mm -hmm. and your preferences even better because then I can be more effective. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go out and we're going to tour homes. Um, and, you know, some people, like, I'd say on average, maybe I show somebody five, six homes before they accept, before the, or before they decide to offer one. Mm -hmm. um, some people I've been showing houses to for six months or more. Some people, they fall in love with the very first one. And so there's no right or wrong way to do this. Right. You know, when you know, you know. Mm -hmm. And my job is just to make sure you're being realistic, that you're not uh, missing some uh, negative aspects of a home that would cause it to be a bad investment or maybe expensive down the road. Um, but that's when we're going to begin the shopping process. Once we've found the one, we're going to write up what's called a purchase agreement. This is also known as an offer. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to, you know, it, we're going to handle it a little differently depending on whether there's multiple offers or if we're the only offer. And we're going to write up an offer, submit it to the seller. Let's say we're the only offer. So we come in just a little bit below the listing price and we're going to do some negotiating back and forth. Um, right now, on average, homes are selling for about 100% of the original listing price, but this is going to fall because like we've talked about, inventory has... Uh, increased a little bit yep, um, yep. and it's and it's kind of on the rise the amount of activity has dropped off a little bit due to the higher interest rates so we should see some more buyer friendly conditions who knows if it'll actually become a buyer's market i don't know if we'll end up with that much inventory that's probably unlikely in the you know in the mm -hmm. short term um but uh once negotiations are complete we've agreed on price and terms with the sellers uh now we have the home under contract and we begin the contract to close process and a lot of this is going to sound kind of complicated. A lot of it is work that we do on the back end. Mm -hmm. And we're just telling you what you need to do when you need to do it. And a lot of it, you're not even involved. We're working with the title company, working with the lender, getting things figured out for you. Um, once we accept the offer, or once we get the offer accepted, you're going to deposit your earnest money check. This okay. is like putting a deposit down on a, sure. uh, on a uh, apartment. Mm -hmm. um, it holds it for you. It shows good faith to the seller. Only way you lose that money is if you back out for a reason that's not specified as a contingency in that purchase agreement. Okay. Um, so you get past inspection, everything looks good. You get through appraisal, it appraises at or above the purchase price. And then uh, all your financing's been approved. It's a week from closing and you decide, oh, we don't want this house anymore. That's when you're going to lose your- Right, right. Uh, lose your earnest money check. And that's when you're probably going to want to talk to a lawyer too, because you yeah. violated the contract. Sure. Um, that's, that's something that's beyond my scope. Have, have you ever, uh, now you say a big part of what you do is getting to know the people, the prospective clients. Yeah. Have you ever actually steered somebody away from, from a house when they said, you know, I really like this one, but maybe John Brodeen knows a little more something about it. Have you ever had to steer anybody away? Because Morally, I know that's what you guys do. Uh, yeah. you, you don't want to sell anybody or help somebody move into a new home and a couple of years down the line, they're not happy with it. Yeah. Um, I would I, imagine I it have, doesn't happen often. I don't like, you know, I don't want to like discourage someone because it's a real emotional high and they're, they're excited sure. about it. So I'm going to try to handle this with as much tact and, sure. uh, you know, professionally, yeah, as, professionally as you can. But there have been times where I'm like, hey, this is like the highest priced home in this neighborhood with you, what you guys want to do to it, you're going to be way over what these neighborhood values are at. So there's not a very good chance of you getting much money back out of it mm -hmm. for all this that you want to do to it. And sometimes people will be hot on it and then they'll sleep on it and then decide, yeah, I don't think this is the one. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell somebody, no, you, you really can't offer on this one. This is a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. My job is still to do what they tell me to do. Sure. It's just to give my professional opinion. So there have been a few times where, um, 
you know, based on my advice, they've decided not to go with something. Um, you know, you, you're, you're the realty expert here. And, and you said, you know, a lot of this sounds complicated. Now, you being the realty expert, I almost think you have number one and number two switched around. Um, <laughs> I think number one should be get your realty expert first, get a hold of your realty expert so you can put the team together because all of this stuff, you're going to guide them through from start to finish. Yeah, that's a good point. And when I'm talking about getting your credit score checked as being the first step, I'm thinking that could be two years away from that. Okay, that could be yeah. as their very first starting to save up for their down payment, mm -hmm, just okay. to make sure there's no surprises on there and then continuing to monitor it. But yeah, once you're ready to go, you've got the money saved up and you know that your credit situation is uh, that your credit report is correct and mm -hmm, everything. Mm -hmm. That's when you're going to get in touch with me. That's when we're going to assemble the team. We're going to do our thing. So, so how long before this all starts in closing? I know there's a lot of steps in there, but how long is it usually on average take? Yeah. So we, we were to the stage where you deposit earnest money. That's mm -hmm. usually going to be like the day of or the day after you get a signed contract. From that day until closing is typically going to be about 45 days. Okay. Um, that gives... The thing that takes the longest is getting the appraisal set up. But the first thing that you're going to do once the home is under contract is getting your home inspection done if you made it contingent upon home inspection. Mm -hmm. um, so you're probably going to get the home inspection done within a couple of weeks. You, uh, So I can give you some options for home inspectors. I can even set it up for you if you like. Try to take all the stress off of you. Find a time that works. I set it up with the home inspector for you. You just have to show up. Typically, the way that works is the inspector, if they start at 9 a.m., I'm going to meet you there at about 11 a.m. once the inspector is wrapping up. Okay. And they're going to walk us through everything that they found. They can also give you some tips on like maintaining a home, especially if you're a first time home buyer. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things about owning a home that you might not know that, right. that you can ask the home inspector because they're the professional in mm -hmm. this aspect. Um, when you get your home inspection, uh, done, it's normal to have a long list of little items. Yep. If there's some safety concerns or some bigger items, this is where if it was really bad, you could back out of the contract. Like we mentioned, we've got that contingency in place. Mm -hmm. so you'd back out of the contract, get your earnest money back as long as it's within the timeline. Yep. Um, what happens most often is there's just a little bit of negotiation. Maybe the seller gives us some concessions or agrees to fix up some safety concerns prior to closing. Then you remove your contingency and you move forward and they get those items done before your final walkthrough at closing. Then the appraisal is something that you don't have to do anything with as the buyer. Uh, the bank is going to assign the appraisal to a random appraiser. The appraiser is going to come out, walk through the property, do their research, look at the past sales, look at the comparable sales, and determine what the value of the home is. All we need here is we need the appraised value to be at or above the purchase price. If it's not at or above the purchase price, this is when we're going to have to renegotiate because the bank's only going to lend um, based on the lower of either the purchase price or the appraised value, Sure, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is a big step that we got to get through, especially in a rising market like we've had over the past couple of years. You have more appraisals coming in low in a rising market because the comps aren't keeping up to current market values. Right. Now in a market that's stabilizing a little bit, less of an issue. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So when you talk about uh, home buying process from start to end, there is a lot of things that have to be done. Yep. A lot of things, especially when you talk about a first time home buyer, a lot of things they might not realize that, that you're going to have to go through. And uh, hence, that's why you get a hold of a realty expert. Yep. And see, we know exactly what to expect. We know the things the buyer could do that could throw things off. Um, I kind of like, I know things that a buyer can do that can end up wasting their time and causing them more hassle and inconvenience than they need to. That's why it's important to get in touch with me early and also to take my recommendations. Most people trust me as their expert and they're going to do what I recommend to do. Um, you know, for example, sometimes people are like, oh, I don't want to get a pre-approval letter until I find the house. That's a big mistake, yeah. especially when the market was at its hottest. Sure. Because the amount of time it takes to get your pre-approval, if a new new hot listing comes on the market, gets multiple offers, and you can't get your pre-approval letter in time before they're going to make a decision on which offer they want to take, you don't have a chance at it. Yeah, the pre-approval letter is good for how long? Yeah, it's usually 90 to 120 days. Yeah, and, and I'm sure you could, can you get an extension on yes, something like that? Super okay, easy. sure. Yeah. Okay, so if somebody wants to get a hold of you, realty expert, Mr. John Brodine, how do they do that? 701-213-5428. Uh, Go ahead and follow me on Instagram and subscribe to me on YouTube, John Brodine Realtor. Um, yeah, I post a ton of content on there, so 
Grand Forks homeowners and buyers and sellers are going to get a lot of value out of that stuff. You know, like John said, it might sound complicated, but when you get yourself a realty expert like John or anybody at Berkshire Hathaway, it makes it so much easier. Yep. John, you have yourself a great weekend. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you back in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. All right, there you go for the Friday. It's your Berkshire Hathaway bi-weekly podcast. Mm -hmm.